The existence of God has been fiercely debated for centuries, but regardless of what you think or feel is true, can we use math, the universal, unbiased language, to come to a conclusion? Can math prove God's existence? The that is a fascinating topic, however, a very difficult one to navigate without running into serious problems. Hi, I'm R. And I'm Jay. And in this video, we'll be reviewing ASAP Science's latest video entitled, Can Math Prove God's Existence? Let's get to it. At the start of this video, the narrator states that the premise for this video is derived from the argument from design. It is worth noting that there are a great many solid rebuttals to the argument from design, but rather than outlining all of the standard objections to it now, we will just leave a link to them in the description and bring up the objections where appropriate. So let's move on. In this case, it suggests that 1. If there's no God, humans developing is very unlikely. 2. Humans did develop, therefore 3. It is unlikely that there's no God. So, one of the initial problems you will run into is determining likelihood. Likelihood is determined using multiple data points to determine a trend. When you only have one universe and one planet with life to observe, then there is no accurate way to determine any probability. Whilst it may be possible that the universe could have come into existence with any number of parameters, it could also be possible that the parameters it has now are the only ones that it can come into existence with. Due to the lack of observations on this topic, it becomes essentially pure speculation, and hence not grounds for proof of anything. But let's take this logic one step further and imagine the universe before anything has been created. Here we have a Bayes box where we have our two possibilities of God existing and no God existing. On the other side, our possibilities are that humans exist or that humans don't exist. If no God is true, then most would agree that human existence takes a lot of specific factors to come about, so let's make up a tiny probability and say that there's a 1 in 4 billion billion chance of humanity coming into existence in a world with no God. If you're going to make an assumption about probability, you probably should list the factors that you use to reach said number, because I've already outlined a problem with determining probability, in that we don't know that a universe with humans in it coming into existence without a god wasn't the only option possible. Or alternatively, you could plug in the multiverse theory. The chance in the without a god section essentially becomes one for one, because at least one universe in an infinite number of universes will host humans. That's not to say that the multiverse theory is legitimate, but to outline that just making a wild number for a no god universe resulting in humans isn't very useful. And if God is real, even though we don't know that God would make humans, certainly he could. So let's give it a higher probability of 1 in 4 million. How did you determine that? How can you possibly begin to determine what the whims of a supernatural timeless being would be? As a side note, considering how poorly designed humans are, I actually think it would be incredibly unlikely for a God to have made them. If you also assume that, given the power to, a God should plan their creations a bit better so that they don't put food into the same hole that they breathe out of. If we are playing the game of what is more likely based on subjective opinion, then it's easy for me to lower the probability of a god creating humans when we take these kinds of observations into account. I understand the point of this isn't that the numbers need to be specific, just that they have to be different, but the problem is you can't even accurately determine which one of these outcomes would be more or less likely if you think it through, as we just pointed out. Of course, if we examine the evidence, we know we exist so we can get rid of the other row. And as many who have used the argument by design point out, a human-made world with God seems much, much more likely rationally and statistically. Does it really? When you consider the multiverse theory versus the chance of a God making a shoddy designed monkey on a single rock floating amongst a trillion other empty rocks, those probabilities seem like they should be inverted. But we still have the same issue as before, in that all of this is wild speculation because it is essentially being based off a single data point that humans do exist. And while this is true in some ways, it forgets an important point, that we have assumed there are only two major theories. But we know this isn't true. Many societies have believed in multiple gods, and given that there are some aspects of this life that aren't nearly as beautifully complex or seemingly intentional, perhaps a variety of squabbling gods created the world. I find it weird that you jump to polytheism before you go to the multiverse theory or even mention the anthropic principle, though I would like to point out that if life wasn't designed with intelligence, but rather by the random hand of nature, we would expect a lot of things to be not as beautifully complex or seemingly intentional. 
due to the non-intelligent or reasoned process of nature. That seems to me a far more probable scenario than a bunch of gods squabbling over how to design the world. Mathematician Jordan Ellenberg uses the probability of 1 in 400,000 that a universe with multiple gods would create humans, but it's important to remember that the exact numbers don't actually matter. What does matter is that we can agree, rationally, that a universe with more gods has a higher chance of creating humans than one with a single god or none at all. Why? We have already outlined why the chances with a god could be decreased, and the chances without a god could be increased, but at the end of the day, they are all just arbitrary, unprovable numbers based off the wildest speculation possible. Now whilst they might be useful for a thought experiment, they are totally useless when it comes to proving anything. It is also worth noting that the title of your video is Can Math Prove God's Existence? Now this is misleading as the video doesn't really contain any maths. You've just created arbitrary numbers that could be easily replaced by the terms less likely and more likely, which is what you've done here, making this video only based off math in the loosest way possible and not what I believe people would expect from a science-based YouTube channel. It's also important to remember that we're not comparing the probability of gods or no gods existing, we're asking ourselves, if the god option is true, what is the likelihood of him making humans? And then we're asking separately, if the multiple gods option is true, what is the likelihood that they would make humans? Now I see two problems with this. One, if you aren't discussing the probability of a god existing, then why is the video called Can Math Prove God's Existence? And why do you talk about proving God's existence with math at the start of the video? That question directly pertains to determining the probability that a god exists. Number two, if we are to take what you have said at face value, then you are beginning with the assumption that God does exist to then allow you to say that this is the probability that a God made the universe. You realize that if a God doesn't exist, the probability of a God creating the universe is exactly zero. For us to take the possibility of a God into account, a God must exist. To assume it and then work backwards is just circular reasoning. Now, let's take this even further to theories of us simply living in a simulation like that of The Sims, which individuals like Elon Musk and Oxford philosopher Nick Bostrom believe. I am still confused that you haven't mentioned the multiverse in this at all yet. I don't believe there is sufficient evidence to suggest that the multiverse is true, but if we aren't even concerned with proving the potential sources exist, but rather are more interested in assuming they do exist, and then discussing the probability that they would create humans, then the multiverse is the way to go and the clear winner. As technology advances, it's almost a certainty that future humans will make extremely realistic human simulations based on the world that we live in, to study these humans like we study mice. Scientists already use simulations to understand nature and human behavior, but in the future it's possible that the human test subjects will be conscious and think they're real. So we can give this scenario a fairly high probability. I immediately see a problem with that though. In that specific scenario, humans must exist to make the simulated humans, so there has to be a greater chance that humans exist than the chance that the simulation exists. So that makes us more likely to be the humans who create the simulation than the simulated humans themselves. You see how ridiculous this line of reasoning is? Again, the exact number doesn't matter, just that we can agree it's very likely that advanced humans would create these kinds of simulations compared to the probability of a god or gods randomly deciding to make humans when they don't need to or could make millions of other animals or other aspects of the universe. Here's the problem though. We can't agree on which one of these is more likely as we don't have the data points to actually determine any meaningful probability. This is all wild speculation based off arbitrary feelings of what is more likely. It has been extremely easy for us to poke holes in how you have ranked those potential sources of human life, and even poke holes in the concept of ranking them without first knowing they even exist. Something with a one in a billion chance of making humans, which actually exists, has a greater chance of something than has a one in two chance of making humans that doesn't exist. Look, this is how easy it is. You forgot to include Bloop. Bloop is a 100% chance of making humans, because that is its purpose. Now when we incorporate that, Bloop is now the most likely cause of human life. It blows all your other options out of the water. It therefore mathematically proves that Bloop exists. So, as you can see, while math can in fact show that the existence of life is evidence that God exists compared to no God, the same math shows more compelling evidence that we're a simulation by much smarter people.
It is therefore proof of how stupid this method of proving things is, not proof that we are in a simulation or created by a god. So if your intention was to outline how ridiculous this method is, then I guess, good job. But if not, then I don't think you understand what constitutes evidence, which would be a shame that such a dedicated science channel has written, recorded, edited, and published a video that is so flawed without noticing such flaws prior to publication. We really have enjoyed ASAP Science's content in the past. They seem to have dropped the ball on this one, and we hope a bit of constructive criticism will help prevent them from doing it again in the future. At the end of the source video, ASAP Science refers to the book How Not To Be Wrong by author Jordan Ellenberg as suggested reading, and also states that this particular book is the primary source for the content of their video. ASAP Science also references Jordan Ellenberg a few times during the video. Unfortunately, we did not have the opportunity to examine the book for ourselves, however, a little bit of Google research did find something that may shed some light on the situation. After all, we did find it a bit curious that a book entitled How Not To Be Wrong could inspire a video that is so flawed in its arguments. Let's see this excerpt from a book review by Manil Suri, the link to which is in the description. Ellenberg's most satisfying debunking is of those who purport to use mathematics to prove God's existence. Using Bayesian statistics, Ellenberg shows that such arguments point to an origin theory that is even likelier. We are all residents of a computer simulation being carried out by a more advanced civilization. His aim is not to refute anyone's religious beliefs, but rather to point out the limits of mathematics. One cannot use it to answer the questions of faith. After reading this, we can only come to one of two pragmatic conclusions. Number one, ASAP Science correctly interpreted the information from Ellenberg's book and created this video to demonstrate the flaws in this line of reasoning, but did so sarcastically and without describing the flaws to the viewer, making it a poor example of how to demonstrate a faulty argument. Or, number two, ASAP Science misinterpreted Ellenberg and instead presented the argument he was trying to debunk as though it was a valid line of reasoning. Given the nature of this video, my money is on the latter, but we will let you decide. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. If so, subscribe for regular videos, like this video, and share it around to help us raise the bar of public discourse.